The first instrument I used this on was the bass. You'll see here in the bass track that there are some uneven waveforms happening. All of these are different sizes, which means they're all different levels. And what we want to do is essentially use the CA2A to smoothen those out and make them all the same volume level. So let's take a listen to the bass in the mix. Now right here, right here, and right all in here, it's going to be a lot louder without the CA2A on. So like you heard, the problem areas are right in here, where he's hitting those bomp bomp hits. So we'll activate the CA2A and I'll show you what I'm doing. First I set the photocell memory to fast reset, so that the bass has a lot of punch every time these large hits happen. Then I set the CA2A to limit, because I really want to crush this signal. On the R37 dial, I turned it up all the way to 100%. This is attenuating all the high frequencies in the bass. There aren't very many, but it's keeping the bass nice and smooth in the top end. Next I add a good amount of peak reduction here, but since I have it set to limiting, not too much. So let's take a listen to this with the CA2A on, and I'll show you what I did with the peak reduction here. Turning it all the way down, it's coming through a lot more big hits, but I'm going to adjust it so that I'm crushing these hits a little bit more. And that lets it sit in the mix really well. So I'm using the compressor to reduce the dynamic range of the bass signal so that everything sounds even. Not doing this kind of thing can make the low end kind of erratic. It makes the mastering engineer's job a little bit harder. <laughs> 